Dear all, Happy New Year. Uh, really happy to be here uh, talking about uh, and keep uh, my efforts uh, on the free course. Just to recap, uh, one of an initiative that I had uh, was to create a, a full-fledged uh, course uh, on infrastructure security and uh, this course is for free on uh, YouTube. You find that uh, under my playlist uh, here uh, you have infrastructure security consultant free course uh, you click on the playlist you have all lessons we went through in the description of the course there is a link uh, to the slide share with a full syllabus we have completed uh, uh, the chapter one about the infra design security principle and we are now keep going uh, on chapter two I finished to talk about ephemeral container and right now we are on lesson 7 how to standardize controls in a scattered infrastructure as a service, platform as a service and function as a service world. My effort is to give you easy uh, points to work uh, towards uh, the topic that we are discussing. The main reason is uh, sometimes uh, uh, is, a, 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 is a difficult journey you risk to zoom in on just one topic uh, missing the, uh, the complete security controls as you see from the syllabus we went uh, across multiple areas and the sum up of that should be, should be giving you a 360 degrees approach now, coming, uh, coming to the question and the topic of today, how to standardize, uh, standardize controls. Most companies experimented in cloud across multiple uh, cloud service provider. That is not really doing multi-cloud, is having multiple accounts. That makes some projects scattered around. Some companies are instead trying to create a real multi-cloud strategy where they can have anyway a workload moving from one cloud service provider to another one. Most of these multi-cloud is generally supported by a CDN standing in front uh, across and uh, redirecting uh, towards the different uh, cloud service provider. On top of that, there is a fragmentation because we have uh, uh, we had uh, anyway immigration to cloud that was made of, of various strategies. Somebody just uh, uh, lift and shift the workload or, or the, the, the server and they use the cloud service as just a virtual machine. That's that was a redesigning for cloud and most later made a decision to pass to platform as a service standardize that some are actually running just code in cloud through function as a service the difficulty here is that within the same cloud service provider having completely different mixed type of service where you have a bit of infrastructure as a service and kubernetes cluster and experimenting some function for just some microservices it's quite common and uh, make uh, uh, our task as a security guys completely um, draining because you do need to have a focus on the standard so here are my suggestion on how to approach this topic first of all uh, pipeline in a multi-cloud environment uh, or in a, a scattered uh, uh, cloud migration it's always the best bet so define a, a CI CD that is across all cloud service provider and let you to have automation uh, obviously uh, I, I, I state the obvious yeah, right now the standard effect is so at the time that each resource uh, also for disaster recovery get invoked uh, or you need to, to rebuild something you should have uh, a strong strategy made on the automation layer and the pipeline my personal suggestion is invest on this uh, terraform uh, 
uh, automation uh, playbook because they are the only way to restore service so they are part of, of the disaster recovery planning as well and they are the only way to have a pipeline where you authorize what to get deployed there are many risks also with uh, break glass uh, um, accounts uh, access to console directly you need to have a uh, uh, console not open to the uh, overall internet you need to create a gateway jump boxes uh, uh, to limit uh, the exposure of that connectivity and have quite clear if a change is authorized or not the change management is on top of your priority he, as in as in IT model but uh, what I'm saying is uh, you shouldn't have changes happening without approval you should have a unique pipeline uh, across uh, your cloud if you are ch uh, challenged by a multi-cloud environment I hardly suggest uh, to use OpenShift um, that's my experience it's the one that uh, give you more flexibility to have a real multi-cloud because you don't care if API are changing and the cloud service provider is changing something is directly implemented and all these changes are maintained by somebody else having a, a pipeline only as a code like github or, or gitlab it's not going to, to serve all purpose of the infrastructure. Here I'm talking also about deployment of services. Another <coughs> thing that you should consider is how you create a golden image. And uh, I feel to suggest HashiCorp uh, uh, ACP Packer because it could simplify your deployment. That's my honest uh, opinion and approach about it another point that you need to have clear in mind and so now right now we are writing the first point that uh, I discussed that is the CI CD uh, pipelines another point that you need to keep in mind is DNS not just uh, as monitoring uh, uh, but as a uniform uh, way to have access what is happening is many are using DNS of the cloud service provider itself and if you are in multi-cloud each is scattered around somebody on 53 uh, from Amazon other somewhere else so try to unify the DNS uh, service trying to establish security about it and monitor the zone I give you an example of uh, of something uh, that happened uh, uh, recently in BMW about a redirect uh, vulnerability so this one is a clear example that uh, is something that gets exploited over and over and over so you need to look uh, at uh, this, uh, be, uh, this general redirection uh, zone transfer how is configure your DNS okay so that is another important point another one is obviously as any architect uh, you need to consider the IAM the solidity of the IAM but don't forget that token management is a big portion of a cloud life so I do suggest uh, to use if you have only one cloud system or one uh, uh, built in into your cloud service provider but if by mistake you find that you are having uh, the service of the token management scattered I do suggest you use uh, a standard and to standardize uh, um, secrets management I do suggest Key Vault and uh, that is in my opinion the best way to have it uh, across a different environment but be able also to centralize the log uh, to centralize the monitoring and to give you that real value another big problem that uh, uh, mo most of the people is underestimate uh, uh, let's write the other point so you have it uh, token management is the bus and by that I mean 
a, a Kafka bus kind. So you need to find a, 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 a sort of uh, standard on uh, the log and the centralization of a log. My suggestion is any cloud service provider include a Kafka. Transport everything by Kafka. In Azure you have a Ventab, in, uh, you do have a Kafka service in any. And so trying to create a, a structure where you use a, a traffic bus uh, and uh, that uh, log convergence uh, it's going into your sim or wherever in a data lake where you have a standardization but try to avoid to have multiple different way to collect logs that's important because uh, you should be capable to monitor topic and be sure that you are receiving the logs but uh, having uh, the trust that whatever new service is pinned you do have anyway something uh, solid that capture all logs in automatic plus uh, you do have uh, the capability in kafka to um, replicate the topics so that it means that if you want to get the same traffic parsed by another engine, another sim, or something else, you can on the fly do that. But plus, you can also reinject something that you just pass and recreate the case. That's in security is quite important. So I do struggle to see an integrator in security right now, and that is a big mistake. A role of a security integrator should be somebody that bridge uh, all these different silos uh, and make a, a design. Architect should do that, but sometimes it's also a matter of integration and engineering. So what I'm suggesting, invest on a good design where you have a bus, you transport everything in there, and you are capable to routing, duplicate, reinjecting. That's my message. So. Another point that you need to consider is that you can have services uh, scattered all around, but they do use API. So for uh, <coughs> API security is really important. And for that, I do suggest you use, uh, is a commercial, but uh, I do suggest to use an APG because uh, at the minute, in my opinion, uh, is the one more commercially more um, ready for an hybrid you can redirect internally you can redirect externally and have a real gateway that serve all purpose if you don't use a service like kong and that is a good option that's help you to actually have a solid api gateway um, uh, concentration uh, focus where everything need to pass through that don't forget in kubernetes you do have a problem a problem that is always there and uh, kubernetes will uh, one day probably fix that is the fact that some api end directly on a pod and not into a, a, an api gateway you risk to have environment where there are API call all around without a structure within a pod and you do have struggles sometimes to have redundancy of those. Plus don't forget that the API are, to, uh, are equal to token and there are two types of API so REST and GraphQL. Based on the different type you have different type of attack and it has to be clear that if you have a gateway, it's way, way easier to monitor, okay? Another point that you need to invest on if you have a multi-cloud or anyway a scattered uh, situation is a CDN. CDN in terms of security as well, and for example, a web application firewall CDN. If you start to group up all your web service behind the CDN uh, WAF, I do give you a gateway where you can just tap uh, all logs straight into your uh, SIM solution and have full visibility. 
One suggestion is whatever you do A B testing, and A B testing is quite common, you have also differences across environment. So you can run at the same time two environment in production that are not having the same type of configuration. If you do have a CDN, you are, are always uh, capable to load balance but uh, use the same gateway in control. From my experience, uh, there is obviously always a load balancer involved in AB uh, testing or in AB provisioning, but that load balancer is too close uh, to the edge and it doesn't let you to have real security control. I don't believe uh, at, on having just a big NJX close uh, within the environment to be your place. Your place should be one step forward because your target is to stop the attacker uh, far away from your estate. Another uh, thing is uh, if you point all DNS records to the CDN, you are hiding where the actual services are. Now we all do hacking and it's not a big deal to discover probably where it is. But it's true that if you close your, um, uh, your uh, environments to only the CDN pool that will serve those requests, you are going to secure the flow. That doesn't mitigate any layer 7 vulnerability that you can have because an attacker exploiting a at a web application bug in any case will be on your environment so it's not a panacea is not a bulletproof solution but what i'm saying is if you are designing a cdn remember to consider that the cdn shouldn't be bypassable and you should always be having a filter where your estate get the traffic only through the CDN so you, your fiber rules should be there that's a, a point that you should do <coughs> tunneling is another big problem that you need to invest on so you need to invest uh, on having jump box not tunneling so there are tons of uh, uh, remote services access I do trust more something that stream in HTML5, the environment, something that it's really a real DLP solution because at the end of the day, you do have the risk to have tunneling passing through. So invest in jump boxes and think your remote services. That's my uh, suggestion to this topic. It's not... I'm not going into the IAM, but obviously the IAM is one of the big point in any zero trust design. And, and I put it as the last one, not because it's the last important, this is more the most complex. Each IAM implementation are anyway generally uh, um, API integration and some are also having a problem of race time condition. You reset the password, you need to replicate across all environments. Pay attention to race time condition, pay attention to type of AIM. If you have an hybrid, for example, you know that if they compromise on-prem, they compromise also your cloud. So be 100% assured that to not rely only on the concept that I have dual factor authentication because if you have a race time condition on session cookie or some sort of vulnerability like the last one that Google had where even changing the password of the cookie was still valid you'll get compromised in any case so please think I am in its complexity and uh, go and do a threat modeling for that <coughs> Sorry, be 100% sure that uh, your IAM is not just uh, an implementation of an Active Directory, but it is also having uh, some testing on um, 
on the hardening and uh, I always uh, uh, suggest to go through CS, um, CIS benchmark uh, for your cloud service provider. So that uh, is uh, a must that you need to have. It doesn't matter if you are a multi-cloud, but if you invest, as I said, in the first point on CI, CD, and you make uh, your CI, CD to be the point of reference for whatever get pushed through a Terraform uh, or a proper token management, you see that your situation get better and easier to be monitored. It's also true that many team are having their access to their own cloud resources. If you create this design through automation on pipeline that are shared, you give them the independence, but you still have the control. Don't underestimate the power of that. I hope I give you a lot of food for thought. Leave here the comment. You saw how uh, structured the syllabus is one uh, of this kind. You don't find this stuff in any other course and I'm giving that all for free. So subscribe, leave a comment. Uh, if you have any doubt, I'm also up for making a video to answer to your question. So try to um, give me feedback and make everything better. Okay, take it easy and uh, thanks for tuning.